today we're going to check some American road trip destinations off our bucket list. Considered one of the top free campsites in the country, we're going to show you how to pick a spot on the rim of Badlands National Park. And then we're going to visit the granddaddy of all tourist traps and how it got that way in Wall, South Dakota. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. We spent the night in Wall, South Dakota. We drove up from Nebraska yesterday. We came straight to Wall Drug. You can't miss it. I did a whole thing on about, there was probably a hundred signs telling you you're almost at Wall Drug or to go to Wall Drug. For over 90 years, Wall Drug in Wall, South Dakota has been luring people off the highway with free ice water, jackalopes, and a giant dinosaur. For Ted and Dorothy Husted, opening a drugstore in a poor tiny town might not have been a good plan during the Depression in 1931 if not for Dorothy's idea to place a sign on the busy Route 16 to draw people to their drugstore. Thanks to her catchy jingle, get a soda, get a beer, turn next corner just as near to Highway 16 and 14, free ice water, wall drug. Each phrase of Dorothy's poem went on a 12 by 36 inch board. The boards were placed along the highway so the people could read them as they drove. And the cars started rolling in and they haven't stopped since. Today, more than two million visitors a year follow those signs and stop at the popular roadside attraction for a meal or activity, five cent coffee, and that free ice water. Wall Drug draws up to 20,000 people on a good summer day. Over the years, Husted's Wall Drug signs could be seen in sites as distant as Morocco, Amsterdam, and London. And during World War II, American GIs carried the Wall Drug message across the globe, proclaiming how many miles it was back to Wall Drug. Billboards became a staple of Wall Drug, and the signs remain hand painted to this day. Weary travelers crossing South Dakota are well informed of how many miles it is to Wall Drug and that still free ice water. Wall Drug was featured in the Academy Award winning movie Nomadland as a work camping destination, and they're always hiring, especially in the summer. Pay starts currently at $14 with the most flexible hours I've ever heard of. How much was this? Hmm? How much was this? $38? I don't know, $700 or something like that. <laughs>
had read that there was a lot of places where people try to park for the night here and they're not supposed to if the lot's owned by the city then you can't park overnight most of the lots have signs but you could miss them they have like one sign in a whole lot um, but I did read where behind the Harley Davidson store that there was a gravel lot where they want semi trucks to park and that that lot was owned by wall drugs so that one was okay we went inside and we checked with the manager and they verified yes this is where we want to park so this is where we parked back there and where that blue bus is that's where a lot of rvs park for the night um and they didn't seem to have any problems so if you're uncomfortable parking here but it's gravel it's not just dirt this lot here looks like you could park there but way over there is a little tiny sign that says no overnight parking so we felt pretty good um it was pretty quiet over here other than this morning the trash trucks that woke us up but what are you gonna do the reason that we chose to spend the night here is we wanted to go out onto the rim the wall um nomad nomad view dispersed camping is where we're headed tonight but we wanted to go out and check it out especially because we've got a 40 foot rig and we just want to make sure that there was a place to go we really didn't want to park on the rim side we really want to park on the grass across from it because there have been rvs that got blown over down into the canyon and people park right on the edge so when we were driving through checking out spots last night we uh, stopped a ranger who was checking things out and asked him and he's we, there's poles posts opposite the canyon so there's like a little road that goes through that you follow and there's posts and he said actually they put up those posts because they want people to park over there one rv between each post not closer you know so that people didn't get bunched up but they would prefer them not to camp on the rim and so we've picked out a couple spots we hope they're still there today the main reason we also didn't go out there is there was a really bad storm with tornado possibility minimal but tornado possibility and we just felt like we'll just stay here for the night and go out today but now it rained a lot <laughs> so it stopped raining around midnight last night we're gonna go out with the car again and make sure that we can get out there you can never be too safe in a 40-foot motorhome so we're just go out and make sure one more time before we take rosie out there and get settled but i think we found an awesome spot hopefully no one else came in and took that spot we'll show you when we get there we had watched several YouTube videos about this free boondocking area overlooking Badlands National Park. It seems almost like a rite of passage into the world of true boondocking accomplishments, although definitely not an award in RV skills, as we witnessed several times while we were there. Let's just say I can't believe more RVs don't end up at the bottom of the overlook. We located a really nice level spot that was far enough from the edge to be safe, but close enough to be able to enjoy those views. We got cows. Yes? Huh? Think they'll come over and say hi? What do you think? Huh? You gonna hide? So it got kind of crowded tonight on on the edge here. There's, we've been seeing people kind of squeezing in up and down. Last night it got pretty quiet. There was hardly anyone here this afternoon and all these people showed up, including these guys. first few days we had some really nice weather and so we set up the FXW dog fence in a way that gave us plenty of room without worrying Dexter might go over the cliff. Now we don't have to worry about him going under the RV, but if you did you would probably have to form yours into a square or a circle.
While using Wall as our base camp for Badlands National Park, we took advantage of getting our laundry done. Our motorhome came with a single washer dryer unit, but it didn't hold but one third of a normal load of clothes. We tossed it and instead we favor recommended laundromats where we can get two weeks of laundry done in just a couple of hours. The laundromat in town was clean and everything worked well. I'll put a link down in the description for the laundromat. We had a rainy day, so we decided to go and check out the giant jackalope at Doll's Chainsaw Art. Throughout the Black Hills, you'll come across several of their locations, but this location needs to be added to your bucket list too. One of the artists was busy with a chainsaw in another creation, and that was pretty cool watching it come alive in front of our eyes. It's free to enter and climb up into the jackalope's head and out onto the upper deck. But the climb itself is what's amazing. There's carvings hidden throughout the walls, staircase railings, and even on the posts within. Okay, so we will head into the jackalope. Just our eyes a little bit. Look at those little details everywhere. Wow. Look at the carving in these posts. We checked out some of the other creations in their inventory, and Sasquatch seems to be the popular favorite, but there's lots of other characters as well. While we were there, actually through August, we were in the territory of the infamous Sturgis Bike Week, which means motorcycles were in this area for the entire month. Although there were motorcycles taking up much of the street parking and driving through Badlands National Park, it really wasn't a problem for us, yet. We hope this episode inspires you to start planning your South Dakota Badlands area visit. On our next episode, we'll share our five-day visit to Badlands National Park, including park campground and lodging information, and why we wished we had even more time to spend there. Hey Roamers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya.